Um, good morning, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present at Grand Rounds this morning and, I guess, practice as much as I can. Um, the case I'm going to present this morning is called Radical Access for Good Clearance. And um, just of note, I've gained consent from the patient for all of the photographs used in this particular presentation. So I would like to present the case of a 75-year-old lady who was referred to ENT from neurology. So she presented with a six-month history of right-sided jaw pain, numbness, stinging, and like a sunburn sensation. Um, she also reported a clumsy tongue. So her symptoms have been worsening over the last few months, and they've been, been more recently associated with dysphagia. She denies any change in her taste, no change in appetite, nor has she noticed any significant weight loss. So with regard to this lady's background history, she's a very healthy 75-year-old lady. I mean, she's got dietary controlled hypertension. Her hypercholesterolemia is controlled by resuvastatin 5 milligrams once a day. She's on 75 milligrams of aspirin, and she gets a rash when she takes penicillin. So on examination, um, just on looking at this lady, she had no facial asymmetry or any weakness. She had no um, palpable cervical lymph nodes. She did have numbness on the right hand side of her chin though, and she reported right-sided tongue deviation. So when she arrived to ENT, she was sent for imaging. So she was sent for a CT neck, which if you can see here in this triangle on the right hand side of her jaw, there's just some um, asymmetry, I guess, and it showed up abnormal enhancement of the right side of the floor of her mouth extending into the right side of her tongue base there. Further to this, she was sent for a PET CT scan, which showed focal increased tracer uptake in the inferior lateral aspect of her oropharynx. She had no lymphadenopathy, no skull base abnormality, no cerebral uptake, nor did she show any metastases in her thoracic, abdominal or pelvic area. So they decided to do a biopsy under general anaesthetic. So they took cells from the right side of deep tongue tissue and her right sublingual gland. And histology confirmed that it looked like a grade two adenoid cystic carcinoma with perineural invasion. So the team decided to sit down and discuss what the best route and the best options would be to take next. So the gold standard for this type of cancer would be to surgically resect it with or without post-operative uh, radiotherapy. So together with anaesthetics and plastic surgery team, they decided that resection would be what they would do. So Mrs. Orke was wheeled up to surgery and she received a tracheostomy in the second tracheal ring along with a selective right-hand side neck dissection in neck, le neck levels two and three. So you can see the route of access that's planned here. Halfway through the surgery here, you can see that they have actually split the mandible in two. Um, you can see the right side of the tongue there after undergoing a partial um, glossectomy. Um, you can see the selective <coughs> right-sided neck dissection here in the tracheostomy inside you. So the plastic surgery team um, went with a free radial forearm flap harvested from her left forearm and they made an end-to-end -end anastomosis with the superior thyroid artery and the facial vein. See the two mandibular segments here are approximated with two mini plates. So they have two screws on either side <coughs> and it's found that this is better than one larger plate. A Penrose drain was inserted into the right side of her neck the wound was closed in layers, and then the total duration of this surgery took eight hours. So postoperatively, um, this lady spent three days in an ICU bed. She was an LPO and an NG tube was inserted. Um, with regard to her antibiotic, she was put on ciprofloxacin, and as you can see, the flap was monitored very heavily. So every 15 minutes for the first four hours, then every 30 minutes, and after that, hourly. So in relation to this mandibular split procedure, I mean, it is really to preserve and restore both form and function of the patient. Um, it does provide better exposure for a section of the primary tumour. And of course, then you have the possibility of microvascular flap reconstruction for the defect. Um, Roux in 1836 was the first man to describe this approach. It was um, further progressed by McGregor in the late 1980s, who used parasols and dental drills to avoid any dental extractions. So there are two ways that this mandibulotomy can be performed. So you can go medially through the centre of the, the jaw, really, and then um, lateral mandibulotomy is shown here. So if you can see the mental foramen, um, which kind of runs alongside the, in, well, in line with the second premolar tooth, um, the reason they don't go with the lateral one now is because you do have to divide the vessels running through the mental foramen, which impedes the healing. So a medial mandibulotomy is um, the recommended route of access um, just because it provides better healing and there's two ways that you can go through with a medial mandibulotomy. So you can go directly through the midline or else paramedian, which is between the lateral incisor and the canine. 
Complications include non-union, osteoid and necrosis of the jaw, um, plate exposure, loss of tooth and graft failure, where minor ones include cellulitis and abscess and a loss of tooth. So recommendations around this procedure would include a pre-operative and possibly a post-operative dental assessment. You should shape and fit the mini plates before osteotomy. The superior plate shouldn't touch off of the dental roots. Use a thin oscillating blade saw and as I said, there's better occlusion of the mandible with two mini plates as opposed to one. So how are we going to progress from this surgery? Um, this future transoral robotic surgery is available in some countries at the moment. Um, it really does make a difference in that it provides much better magnification, much better dexterity. Um, the degrees of articulation, of course, in a small oral cavity is very difficult to get. And uh, most of all, I guess it's very comfortable for the, the surgeon position at the <coughs> surgeon console, um, especially when you're trying to avoid very important structures such as Wharton's duct and the lingual nerve. I mean. There are, many, there are many advantages to using this type of surgery, but at the moment I don't think that you can disagree that the outcomes of this surgery have been marvellous for this patient. You can see here on the left hand side the post-operative results, the scar there, um, particularly through her lower lip and chin is fantastic. So she had her surgery on the 5th of August and these photographs were taken at the end of October. Um, these are my references and on behalf of myself, the patient and Professor.